With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Of everything that could have come from the decks of the main team from the original anime, archetypes being made from individual monsters and countless retrains of ace and side monsters was honestly not something I ever expected to see. Yugi now has an archetype for just about every recognizable monster from every era of his deck, from Dark Magician and Buster Blader to Magnet Warriors and the Poker Knights. Kaiba had archetypes fully fleshed around his Blue Eyes White Dragon, Chaos Monsters, and the XYZ lineup, which, for whatever reason, still doesn't have an Xyz monster on the roster. Konami, fix that. Joey had red eyes and, well, more red eyes. Nonetheless, you'd think that everything's been covered. But of all things to never be imported to the physical card game, Konami missed an entire archetype played by the Godfather of Games. Landstars, an archetype whose aesthetic concerningly resembles the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of an entire family of marshmallow. The Landstar archetype consists of level 3 Earth Warrior normal monsters with no relation to one another outside of their shared name. The Swordsman of Landstar, their first ever monster, was a staple of Joey's Weenie Hut Jr. vanilla monsters during the Battle City arc, and was unassuming at best. Surprisingly, this archetype made a resurgence during the 5Ds era with a tuner retrain in the Crossroads of Chaos set, Comrade Swordsman of Landstar which increases the attack of all of your warrior monsters by 400. Joining the ranks of the old vanilla monsters, but now we have effects that are painfully average at best club. I hate to say it, but it's among the better ones, just on the facet of being a tuner, and it is without question the best Landstar monster. Between the Battle City arc and 5Ds, Joey graced us with three new monsters and two spell cards for the archetype. Knight of Landstar with 1000 attack and 1200 defense, Grappler of Landstar with 1,000 attack and 500 defense, and last, and definitely least, Brigadier of Landstar with 900 attack and 1,200 defense. So it's safe to say that we're off to a bad start. I don't know why I'm surprised. Not only is it a Duel Monsters era deck, but it's also Joey's. So we've got the boys, but how do we bring them all together to crack a few cold ones? Two words. I activate Landstar Forces! Landstar Forces. Making its first appearance in Episode 4 of Season 5 is a normal spell card with the following effect. Special summon as many level 3 or lower Landstar monsters from your hand as possible. Yeah, that's pretty solid, all things considered. It doesn't restrict you from summoning duplicates, so in the unfortunate circumstance that you open 3 grapplers and forces, you have a Link 3 at your disposal immediately. Being that these are all scrawny little fairy warriors, it's fitting that they have their very own weapon that being Landstar Shot, which appeared in Episode 6 of Season 5 during Joey's duel against Siegfried. Not only does this card give my Brigadier a fancy new musket, it boosts his power by 600! This equip spell card could only be equipped to a Landstar monster, trust me, no one else wanted it. The equip monster's attack is increased by 600. In the only shot we have of this card from the anime, its effect text appears extremely long to only have a simple boost. Well, we actually have three fragments of effects from translating what is shown. The equipped monster is destroyed, which we can probably assume that it says if this equipped monster is destroyed by battle or card effect. Then we have destroy A and attack by 400. Unfortunately, these secondary effects were never used in the anime, so my best approximation is that if the equipped monster is destroyed by any means, you can either destroy a monster or spell trap your opponent controls, then permanently increase another Landstar monster's attack by 400. It's not fantastic, but we're also still smack dab in the Duel Monsters era, so it's serviceable. With these five cards completing the Landstar archetype, I can say with a high degree of certainty that these cards are not about to break the game if they were debuted tomorrow. Being low-level vanilla warrior monsters, the deck as it barely stands has a plethora of outside support by means of the Infernoble and Noble Arms cards 
the empowered and summoner archetype, as well as the widespread generic vanilla and warrior support. However, adding these cards to any of those decks becomes an active hindrance to any win condition you are clumsily trying to put together. That being said, the deck needs more. Let's go back to Landstar Forces. This card raises some questions. With the inclusion of the phrase level 3 or lower in the card effect, I'm inclined to believe that land stars were intended to have more monsters in their archetype, and I'd be led to believe that they were level 5 or higher. And I do wonder if land stars were at one point meant to be a dedicated deck for a character in either the main series or 5Ds, but Konami abandoned the idea for some reason. While I'd want to see another level 3 land star effect monster with a Stratos effect for good measure, if level 5 Landstar monsters would make the cut for additions to the archetype in a physical print, I could see the archetype benefiting from taking on the UA playstyle, of swapping out your low level monsters for the higher levels. Landstar Forces quickly turns into a potent rank 5 engine, and the additions of level 5s also opens up access to the Battle Guard support. Mainly Cadet, but you can still use the other ones if you so choose. I'd also want to see an assortment of back row support that have varying effects based on if you control level 3 or level 5 Landstar monsters. Whether those are equipped spells that can only be equipped to either level, a mass effect like forces that works with level 5 Landstar monsters, or some form of counter trap that responds to effects while you control either a level 3 or 5. It sounds a bit gimmicky, but I think the UA playstyle is a good starting point to build a better deck onto with Landstar. And of course, because it never hurts, an in-theme Rota would always be appreciated. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Guys. Let me know your thoughts. Is there an archetype that you want me to cover in this series? Drop your comments down below. Let me know. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated as always guys and until next time this has been purple pineapple tv signing off